Hey ladies and gentlemen, and Christoph the Polish Geek here, and welcome to another top 10 list. Yeah, it's been like a while since I've done a top 10 list, and this time I decided to do my top 10 favorite comic book movies. Like, com I haven't grown up on the comics, because in Poland the, com the superhero comics haven't been very popular as they have in the United States, so... I have not grew up reading comic books, although I did grow up watching Batman the and Superman the Animated Series, which I loved, by the way. So yes, my childhood exposure to comic book heroes was through the DC Animated Series, which are still some of my favorite series ever, by the way, and later through the live action movies. That's really my how I'm familiar so much with the DC and Marvel heroes, so yeah. I personally prefer DC over Marvel, although MCU I think has objectively been better than the DCEU, which has been a mess objectively, and the latest Flash movie was a huge, huge disappointment. So, I've, while the MCU was objectively better made, even though the latest MCU movies, with the exception of their last one, which was fantastic, have not, also not been very great but yeah these are my top 10 favorite comic book movies and I'll get one thing out of the way when I said how much I love the animated series Batman Mask of Phantasm is one of my favorite comic book movies ever but it's not on this list reason being is even though it's technically considered a full-length movie I consider it as nothing more as a long extended episode of Batman the animated series Thus, Batman Mask of Phantasm is not here, but I trust me. I think Batman Mask of Phantasm is simply phenomenal. It's incredible. It's fantastic. But because I consider it as just an extended episode of the animated series, it's not here. So, let's get now with my top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time. Number 10. And that's the original Spider-Man by Sam Raimi. Yeah, the Spider-Man trilogy by Sam Raimi holds up so well. I still think those movies are very good. Like, I remember when I watched Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the MCU, I literally thought it was the best alliteration of Spider-Man i ever seen. But that's because I haven't seen the Spy Sam Raimi trilogy in many, many years. But upon rewatch, I realized, no. I still think that at least live, in live action, the best version of Spider-Man is still, still by far the Tobey Maguire version. Like, the story is really good here, the, char the characters are likable and the origin story is done so well. And it's pretty nostalgic too, since I remember that's another thing I watched in my childhood. And I think the whole trilogy is great. And the universal agreement among fans seems to be that the second is the best and then the third went downhill, but I disagree. I think all three movies are really good, but my favorite will always be the first one. Because that's the origin story, I also love the Green Goblin. <laughs> and I just love how we are getting introduced to all those characters. So yeah, my favorite of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy is the first one, and my 10th favorite comic book movie of all time. Number 9, Wonder Woman. Yeah, as I just said before, DCU has been a huge, huge mess. And MCU has been doing much better, but Wonder Woman is one of those exceptions. Wonder Woman is one of those DCU movies that was really great. Like, I love Diana Prince, and I think Gal Gadot is fantastic as Wonder Woman. The music here is excellent, and so much fitting of the character of Wonder Woman. And also, I love the setting of World War I, especially that we don't get many movies that take place in World War I. We have lots of movies that are set in World War II, but very rarely in World War I. So yeah, I love the setting of World War I. And I love the final message of the movie, which is pretty sad, but it is true in some ways. And I love the decision that Wonder Woman chooses to make. And I also love the origin story of Wonder Woman, and I think Steve Trevor is a really cool, cool character. <laughs> yeah, so 
DCU has not been doing very well, but Wonder Woman is one of the exceptions. Great movie. And by the way, the sequel, 1984, that sequel was pretty bad and disappointing. Number 8, and as surprised as I'm to say that, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah, like this movie, lo lots of people seem to love this movie just like me, but it seems that I'm one of the very few people who actually loved it as much as I did. I already did a full review on this movie and I still love it. Like, I love how it's very dark. It's objectively the darkest MCU movie ever, and yet it, to it totally feels totally at home in the tone with the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Gal Guardians of the Galaxy movies have always been the most lighthearted of the movies. And by the way, both of the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies are some of my favorite movies in the MCU. But I think the third one is by far the best in the trilogy. And as I said, even though it's the darkest one, it still very much feels totally tonally consistent with the first two. Which shows the achievement. And also, and I love the conclusion that all the characters got, I thought... Every character get, character got a wonderful payoff to their arc, and I love the comedy in this movie, it's really funny. After Avengers Endgame, Marvel Cinematic Universe has not been doing very well, but this movie and Spider-Man No Way Home are the two exceptions. But not like yeah, not only Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is one of my favorite movies in the MCU ever. And as you see, it's one of my favorite comic book movies ever. So, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 at number 8. Number 7. And that's the most recent Batman movie. Yeah, this movie, when I first watched it, I thought it was enjoyable, but I didn't think... But it didn't quite go above and beyond about me. It wasn't quite as good as I hoped it would be. Maybe because I set up my expectations way too high, but with time I actually like it more and more the more I watch it. The, to the dark tone of the movie is fantastic. I love how it's basically very much a neo-noir thriller. And I love how the movie focuses more on the detective part of Batman. And while I won't say as far as Robert Pattinson is the best Batman, no. But I certainly think that... The Gotham City portrayed in this movie is the best Gotham City portrayed in live action. Like, you totally feel like it has a life of its own. And it totally feels like Gotham City. Yeah, and I also love in this... Another thing I really love in this movie is... I'm really hoping that the sequels will deliver. And I heard actually a lot about this thing that comics have now Court of Owls, which sounds really awesome. And honestly... I'm really hoping that the sequel will use Court of Owls, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Because Court of Owls is something that I think those Matt Reeves series could really use, and it really could be interesting. Yeah. And last thing, I do hope we'll see more of Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne and Alfred in the next movie, because I think Alfred is a really great character, and I would like to see more of him in this universe too. So, yeah. The Batman by Matt Reeves at number 7. And at number 6, and that's a tie, Avenger, Avengers Infinity Wars and Avengers Endgame. And this movie could practically be considered, like, those two movies, I mean, could practically be considered one movie split into two parts. Because they very much tell, tell an overall story. And this is the true finale we've all been waiting for ever since the first Avengers came out. I remember when the first Avengers came out, I was really looking forward to seeing them fight Thanos, but I didn't expect I would have to wait whole 10 years for it. And then the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I again saw Thanos, and I figured that sadly it's likely, it likely would be a while before we see a final fight with Thanos. But Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame totally delivered it and it totally was worth the wait. Like, I love this, in Infinity War I love the story and I love how we get more exploration of Thanos because Avengers Infinity War is practically a Thanos movie. It doesn't really focus much on the Avengers. But 
I think it's a fantastic movie. And then the ending of how Thanos actually man manages to win. This is one of those endings that really leaves you like, oh my gosh, what's next? And then they force you to wait a whole year. And then Avengers Endgame was incredible. Like, it delivered on everything I wanted it to do. And I loved how Avengers Endgame focused mostly on the original Avengers because all the new Avengers, like Black Panther, Spider-Man, all of these guys, and even most of the Guardians of the Galaxy, all of these guys have been part of the blip, and they blipped, but all the original remaining Avengers, I love that they actually stayed with us, and it was basically their movie, and they all got the wonderful send-off they deserved, and the final act of Avengers Endgame is still probably the best act in the whole MCU. It's fantastic. So, Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War, or more specifically Avengers Infinity War and then Avengers Endgame, both of these movies delivered on everything I wanted to and they were a wonderful conclusion to the MCU. And I just pretend like there haven't been anything else, like both Spider-Man movies and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 are basically like epilogues and no more because as I've said many times in this video and other videos the Marvel Cinematic Universe isn't doing so well now and I'm not expecting them to really get any better so yeah Avengers Endgame was a perfect conclusion and Spider-Man No Way Home and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 were perfect epilogues and the number five, and it's another tie, this time between both of the Spider-Man Spider-Verse movies, like Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. So, yeah, it's a tie between those two movies. Like, those two movies are fantastic movies. Like, the animation is gorgeous, and I love the comic book style of it, especially in the second movie, how we get to see various different comic book arts in different worlds. The usage of the multiverse is amazing and it doesn't feel forced, it feels quite natural and serves the story very well. I also, like My I also love Miles Morales, I think he's an excellent character and I love his relationship with Gwen Stacy, I also think she's an excellent character and I love this, how the second movie explores her backstory as well as the watercolor world of her. I think Kingpin is a fantastic villain and then the spot in the sequel is an even better villain <laughs> and uh, the story of both of those movies is amazing and I also love Miles Morales relationship with his parents because those movies are very much superhero movies but they're also very much family movies and yeah I just love Spider-Verse movies and I'm really hoping the third movie delivers if the third movie delivers those movies might be moved slightly higher, like they might even be moved to number four, who knows. And that said, if the Spider-Verse 3 movie disappoints me, then sadly this will likely have to be moved much lower or even taken off the list. But, fingers crossed, Beyond the Spider-Verse delivers. Because so far, Spider-Verse movies are some of the best comic book movies ever. Number four. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, like this movie, I've been one of those people that actually liked Zack Snyder's approach to the DCU. Like, Batman v Superman was very much a mess and would benefit more if it was two separate movies or and if there was slow build-up to all the events happening as opposed to just feeling like forced. But overall, I really like Zack Snyder's darker approach to the DCU. So, I always wonder to, like, what would Zack Snyder's version of Justice League look like? Because I never liked the first Justice League by Joss Whedon. Yeah, I thought the Joss Whedon Justice League version was pretty bad and disappointing because I was literally looking forward to that movie. But Zack Snyder's Justice League totally exceeded my expectations and it was basically exactly what I wanted the Joss Whedon version to be. Like... I love the story in this movie, and I love the tone of the movie, and the grit, 
and I think Steppenwolf is much better than he was in the Just Sweden Justice League. Like I thought he was poorly handled in the original version, but here in the Zack Snyder version, I thought he was simply excellent, and even the physical design of him was amazing. Yeah, I thought Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf simply looked incredible in the Ju in the Zack Snyder Justice League, and still. One of the best villain designs I ever seen in any movie. Like I love all silver and all. Yeah, I love Steppenwolf in this movie. And I also thought that I love how we get to actually explore the backstory of the cyborg here. And I also love that we get to see Dark Side because I always wish to see his the interpretation of him in the DCU. I always wonder what he looked like in this movie. Granted my wish, although. I also really wish this was continued because I knew both know this is not ever going to get continued but I really wish it did because I really would love to see an Avenger style final battle with Dark Side that would be so fantastic <laughs> and I love how the resurrection of Superman here is so better handled and I think Superman is a much better character than he was in Batman v Superman here too yeah Zack Snyder's Justice League is excellent and it was everything I wanted originally Justice League to be but the, as I said the Joss Whedon version was a disappointment but the Zack Snyder version totally exceeded my expectations and it was basically everything I wanted the original Justice League to be so yeah I love Zack Snyder's Justice League and I really wish we, get it, we got a continuation of this story and the final battle endgame style with Dark Side. But sadly, this isn't happening. But still, fantastic movie. Number three, and that's The Batman by Tim Burton. Like, yeah, the, ori the Batman from 1989 by Tim Burton still holds up so well. It's still one of the best comic book movies ever made. Like, it was made back in the 80s, but still, it's still an amazing movie. Much better than almost all the modern superhero movies like Michael Keaton as Batman is great and Jack Nicholson is a wonderful Joker and I also love the music in this movie and the tone is also pretty dark and I love how gothic but Gotham City is here yeah and I think the action here is great too the music is also fantastic and it captures the tone of the movie so well and I have to say also that it's really wonder that this movie was made even before the animated series, which shows that even before the animated series, some writers really had great idea of what a good quality Batman story could be. Because the Batman from the 80s still holds up very, very well. Number two, Logan. Yeah, Logan is a great movie. It's fantastic. It's the best X-Men movie ever made. I love the X-Men franchise, but Logan is so high above all of them. And also, <laughs> I love that this movie is just as much a comic book movie as much as this is a science fiction movie and they're very much modern neo-western and I love it. And also I love the fact that it can totally be enjoyed by people who haven't seen any of the X-Men movies before because the story is very much standalone. And I also love the perfect send off to Wolverine here and I love his father-daughter relationship with the girl Laura it's so well done and their chemistry is so fantastic and I also love the themes that this movie discusses like xenophobia, hate, cloning yeah and also the characters are fantastic and the uh, ending is very emotional too and yeah this movie is simply phenomenal and it's incredible and also the action scenes are pretty great too I love Logan Logan, fantastic, but my favorite comic book movie of all time at number one favorite comic book movie of all time is still the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah, this trilogy is incredible. It's not just the best comic book movie trilogy of all time, it's one of the best movie trilogies ever made. It's possibly even my second favorite movie trilogy after The Lord of the Rings, of course. Like, The Lord of the Rings trilogy will always be my number one, but this I think might actually be my second favorite trilogy. I love those movies. Like Christopher Nolan crafted such an amazing story 
and told us the story of Bruce Wayne in three separate chapters. And all of those three chapters are fantastic. Like, Batman Begins was an awesome origin story. And then their Dark Knight was probably the best part of the whole thing. And then the Dark Knight Rises is an amazing conclusion. Because the story here is just fantastic, incredible. And I also love the realistic the realistic tone that Christopher Nolan chose to go for while to tell us the Batman story. And another thing I love about it, I love all the I love also the cinematography in this movie. I mean it's Christopher Nolan, come on. And of course, like the usage of villains from the comics here is also fantastic. Like Heath Ledger is still the best Joker ever on the live action. And but I also think Two Face here is also great. And I love Tom Hardy as Bane as well. <laughs> and the fight between Batman between Batman and Bane is still wonderful. And by the way, yeah, I know that the Dark Knight Rises is kind of divisive, but I could not disagree more. The Dark Knight Rises is incredible. And if you like the first two, I see no reason why you shouldn't like the Dark Knight Rises. Because the Dark, the Dark Knight Rises is a fantastic, perfect movie, and I see and I see no reason why. Why do some people complain about it? Because there is nothing, there is no problem I see in The Dark Knight Rises. But oh well, the whole trilogy is fantastic. Still, the best one in the trilogy is probably The Dark Knight, but all three of those movies are phenomenal and some of the best movies ever made. And I just love them so much. Like, The Dark Knight trilogy is still one of my favorite movie trilogies ever made. And the Dark Knight Trilogy is one of those movies I could watch over and over again and never get bored because those movies are magnificent and the best comic book movies ever made and I don't think it's ever going to change for me. Okay guys, so here you have my top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time and because some more comic book movies are coming I might redo this list someday in the future, but for now this is my definite ranking of the comic book movies. But I'll say this though, as much as those are my 10 favorite comic book movies, my favorite comic book adaptation though will always be DC Animated Universe, also known as DC AU. Yeah, like, hmm, all, I love all those fantastic movies here on this list, but DC Animated Shows will always be my favorite. Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League, yeah, Batman Beyond, yeah. Like, DC Animated Universe will always be by far my favorite comic book adaptation. But, those movies are fantastic. But, just to, for you to know, my favorite comic book adaptation story though will always be DC Animated Universe. I love DC Animated Universe and I'm totally giving it that you should be watching Treatment someday. So, what are your top 10 favorite comic book movies? <laughs> Press the like button, please subscribe to this channel and I will talk to you soon in another video. Talk to you later, bye!